apps is start recording. Nice. All right. Nice. So, welcome everyone. Welcome to the, another NZSA webinar. I'm sure a lot of you guys have come along to these events before, so you know the drill. But for those of you that don't know me, I'm Harry. And uh, tonight we have presenting a really interesting topic called Hips Don't Lie by Martin Bennett and Felix Lomprier. Both Martin and Felix are members of the uh, NZSA technical team. And I've got a lot of really cool and interesting things to talk to you guys and share with you tonight, which will be uh, pretty cool. Just a little bit of housekeeping before we get into it. Can we please make sure everyone's microphone is muted while Martin and Felix are presenting, just to make sure the message gets across nice and clearly. Uh, if you've got any questions throughout the session, you can type them in, okay, and then I can read them out to Martin or Felix. Or if you want at the end, you can, uh, we'll have a little bit of a question and answer time where we'll get you up on the screen and you can uh, ask Martin or Felix directly uh, anything. All good? All awesome. right, Martin and Felix, All take good. it away. All right, um, thanks for the introduction, Harry. You, you said my name perfectly, so that's a great start. Not easy either. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so um, Hips Don't Lie, um, I was going to come in with, we didn't have the song, but Brian's played it there, so, uh, but Shakira, Hips Don't Lie, if you haven't heard of it, then, um, yeah, after this, it's a hell of a tune, so check it out. Um, anyway, ideal movement of the, of the pelvis, not the hips, of the pelvis. Um, what we're looking to do uh, during this webinar is give you guys a better understanding of uh, some ideal movements of the pelvis um, through a dynamic medium radius turn. All right, so um, we'll look at all three phases individually, uh, and within that, we're going to look specifically at um, lateral and rotational uh, movement uh, within that. Um, we'll look at what the movement is, um, why we're looking to do it, and some like, outcomes that we'll get uh, ski by doing these moves. Um, so, Martin, would you want to kind of share with everyone some of our um, sort of our drive and why we chose this sort of topic to present today? Mm, yeah, sure. So. Um, for me, I guess just a little bit of a backstory about it when Felix and I were discussing doing this topic is um, we both felt personally and, and for me for sure um, in the process of going through the tech team tryouts last year and pretty much for the whole last 12 months, this is something I've been really focused on in my own skiing. Um, and I guess probably the previous two years um, to starting to go through the tech team process last year, I felt like I kind of hit a a bit of a kind of a plateau in my skiing. I felt like I hadn't made a big improvement for a while. Um, and I felt like just understanding how I move and align my pelvis better against, um, so, so I can stack up against the forces better, um, actually felt like my skiing improved a lot. So um, that's why we kind of started to talk about it and we felt like it, it helped us quite a lot. So we wanted to try and share that with other people and hopefully it's helpful for, for you guys too. Yeah, totally. And I mean, um, for me, like when I, I've a, bit, a little bit more of an awareness now, but when I look back on so many of my videos over the years and coming through the levels, I see so clearly now some faulty like movement patterns in my hips. Um, and so, you know, I just a really good opportunity to, to sort of share that with you and, and help, help you guys out. Um, on your, on your journey um, through the levels, so I might just do a bit of a screen share now. Let's jump into it. Um, so got a bit of a slideshow for you guys. Um, so all right. So um, the pelvis here. Um, so you know, as you can see, like the pelvis is a really large bone in the body. It's got a lot of mass, and it's like the intersection between the um, with well, the lower spine and the um, and the femur bones, so you know it had it has a lot of it's got a lot of weight, and the way you use it's kind of really important and and has a big impact on on movements in your skiing. 
you want to have a couple of words, Martin? Yeah, so um, during this, this presentation, um, we're, we're going to be talking a lot about the pelvis, but we're also going to be referring to the center of gravity uh, quite a bit. So um, just before we kind of get into it, I just want to just make it really clear that the center of gravity is is close to the pelvis, but it's not the same place as the pelvis. It's, it's a little bit higher than that. And it will depend completely on your own body as to where that will be. Um, same like like Felix was talking about, about the pelvic bone, um, that will change in size depending on who you are as well. So, um, but just generally the center of gravity is slightly higher. So when we're talking about that, it's not the same as the pelvis, just to avoid any confusion. Cool. Perfect. All right. So we're going to look at the three phases, as mentioned earlier. Um, we could have started at any phase, really, of the turn, but um, we, we've decided to start at the control phase as it sort of made the sense to, um, for the movements that, that we're going to talk about. Um, so we're going to start control and then completion and the initiation phase of the turn. I'm sure um, most of you guys, all of you guys are aware of, of, of these phases and this, um, seen this image many times. Okay, so um, so as mentioned earlier, uh, we're going to cover lateral uh, lateral movement, and we're going to look into the rotational movement. Um, I'm going to do um, I'm going to be the lateral man, and Martin Bennett is going to be captain rotational today. Um, so I'm going to talk about lateral, and firstly, I'm going to be talking about I'm going to do it in like two parts. So I'm going to talk about the relationship of the pelvis to the base of support. And then I'm going to talk about the angle of the pelvis. All right? Are you ready? Okay. So um, what I want you to see in this image here, so you see the pelvis, it's a little bit shaded there, um, that shaded bone there. And, and I want you to just notice like how far it's moved inside of the base of support. Right, so it's, it's moved, or when I say base of support, what I'm referring to are the skis, right? So it's moved away or inside of the skis. So a, a reason that it has done this is to help achieve like a high edge angle. So if you look at the edge angle of the ski there, um, you know, it's, it's, it's on a pretty high, high angle to get a good bend and good performance out of the ski, right? Oh, thanks, Harry. That's a beautiful arrow. Um, Harry's going to be on arrows and, uh, and drawing, so let's, uh, that, that's going to be good fun. Um, so th this is the control phase, right? And, and the pelvis is going to be f like the furthest inside of the base of support or the furthest inside of the skis at the control phase, okay? It, when you compare it to any other part of the turn. So right in this image, it's not going to move away from the skis or inside any further than this, right? And this is because the force is the greatest at this point of the turn. Okay, so the pelvis is moving inside of the turn as a sort of due to the amount of force um, that has been generated. So the more force you have in the turn, the more the pelvis, will, the more you can allow the pelvis to move inside. So in this turn, right, there's, the pelvis is pretty far inside the turn. There's a lot of force going on. Let's say, for example, same skier, um, half the speed. So there's going to be a lot less force, so the pelvis is not going to be able to move inside the turn uh, as much with, that, with, the, with less force, right? Um, and if you did, and we've all been there when we've like, when we started to move inside and then we've gone too far, more than the, we've moved the pelvis more than the force will allow and it won't hold us up anymore, right? And that's when you start to... Um, transfer your weight from the outside ski to the inside ski and that's when you end up you know falling on your hip and um, that's been I've been in those situations many a time so um, yeah at this point of the turn it's moving inside you know in accordance with how much force you have um, and so yeah that's a, a common issue is, is is just moving it in too too far or yeah and it won't hold you up anymore Right, so that's, let's move on to now the angle of the pelvis. Okay, so we're still in lateral focus. Um, you can see that the angle of the pelvis is um, more level, right, than the, than the angle of the ski. So this has created a position of angulation in the body. Yeah, 
So you can see that the upper body is a little bit like, <clears throat> is a little bit sort of towards the outside ski, right? So that position has, has made that happen. And, and the result of that will be like a really good pressure and really good connection to the outside ski, which is going to give you, get that ski to bend in and again, give you um, good performance through that. Now you might notice that the pelvis is not level, but the really important thing here is that the skier is, is moving with an intention, right? With an intention, with an intent to keep the level, uh, to keep the pelvis level. So you can ski with the feeling of the inside hip. Harry, can I get a little mark by the inside hip there? Yeah, perfect, right? So, so skiing, the skier is, is moving with it with a feeling of lifting that inside hip. So you might have heard people say before, like inside hip high, right? So, so moving in the direction of the arrow there. Yeah, and that, that intention is giving the skier that angulation in the control phase, which is really connecting to that outside ski. I hope that's kind of making sense to you guys. Um, so, so both of um, or what what can happen then if let's say that let's say the pelvis was um, on a higher angle and was more inclined into the turn, right? So less level. Then the upper body, what would happen is the upper body would be tipped into the turn a little more, right? So it wouldn't have that kind of that the upper body wouldn't be um, as upright and as towards the outside skier to be more inclined. And that's when you start getting that weight transfer onto the inside ski, right? Um, so yeah, so, you know, skiing with that intent of, of, of trying to keep that pelvis level, even though it may not be, is the important thing here. Um, so those two kind of elements of the control phase and, and lateral movement are really going to help you to um, to achieve the goal of the control phase, right? And the goal is to um, for the ski to grip, for the ski to bend, and to shape the turn, right? And ultimately turn your body or move your body through the arc, right? So these things are kind of going to help you um, move closer or help you achieve that ultimate goal of the control phase. Um, yeah, Any, have you guys got anything to add? Um, there or anything to clarify? No, it's good, I reckon, Felix. Okay, well, yeah. should we move on? Perfect, cool. So, yeah, like Felix was saying, like the whole the whole point of the control phase or what we're trying to achieve in the control phase is a is a positive direction change. So we're trying to balance against the forces so that our center of gravity or our body can be can change direction or move, right? So. Um, so when we're talking about the pelvis rotationally, um, the reason, one of the reasons we decide to start with the control phase is, is it, it starts from here and then you can move through the rest of the turn um, in, a, in a positive way. So um, the key thing for this is that the pelvis and the skis should be going in the same direction. So you should be square to the skis throughout the whole turn. Um, and the reason that we want to do that is so that we can be in a really strong position to handle the forces. So if we're getting a high amount of force and we're, we're not in a good position to, to deal with it, then it's, it's going to struggle. Um, and another really good benefit of having the pelvis square to the skis at this point in the turn is that it allows some separation to build later. So if we've already got some separation or if we've got some kind of counter with the hip here, then it's going to be hard to, to generate more of it later on in the turn, right? So um, if we're in this position, if the, the pelvis is square to the skis throughout the control phase, then we're going to deal with the forces better and we're going to get that more of that positive direction change that we're after, after in the control phase. So a couple of key points there. So if you, and you, you may, if you're looking at your own videos or you've seen something else, something I've been kind of working on in my skiing as well is um, how, how my hip is placed. So is it facing the same way as the skis or is it slightly counted out of the turn? And if the hip is counted out of the turn, so if the green arrows on the, this skier's pelvis, if it's pointed slightly out of the turn, so not facing the same direction as the skis, then it's gonna put us in a, in a slightly weaker position. And what will tend to happen is the pelvis will drop inside the turn more and you need to compensate with a, a big angulation movement of the upper body to stay balanced on the outside ski. Um, and if, once you do that, if you balance towards the outside ski a lot with the upper body, it can pull you out of the turn. So it can move your center of gravity back towards or over the skis and it will cause you to lose grip and lose performance um, in the control phase. 
Um, opposite to that, if the pelvis is rotated past the skis, so into the turn more than the direction of the skis, then it's going to put you on the inside ski and not, not in a good place to, to balance against the forces. Anything to add, Felix? Uh, I'm, I'll go with that. I'll go with that. I'm pretty happy. I'm happy. All right. Harry, anything? Uh, no, no. Yeah. Okay. Hit it, hit it well there, Martin. Everything's right. good. Nice job. Um, okay. Uh, completion phase, lateral focus. So again, I'm going to talk about the pelvis relationship, the base of support first. And, and straight away, you can see that the pelvis has moved back um, towards the base of support. So, you know, if I flip back to, I hope you guys can see that, like you look at the pelvis there, how far it is away from the base of support. And then we go to here and um, yeah, a lot more on top. So Moving, it's going to be moving in the direction of that arrow through the through the whole completion phase, right? So the pelvis is is progressively moving back on top of the skis or back on top of the base of support. Um, so this is going to help flatten the skis, right? Until ultimately, in that transition period, right when the skis are flat, the pelvis is right on top of the skis, right? So so you're moving from having the pelvis inside the turn to gradually and sort of precisely moving it back on top of the skis um, into that neutral position ready to move into the next turn. And I think sometimes what can happen is if the pelvis is allowed to sort of release or to move back on top of the skis on a, in a fast rate or really rapidly, it can have like a negative impact on the initiation of the next turn. So what can happen is if the outside ski, right, if, if, oh, sorry, not the outside ski, if the outside leg softens really quickly, can I get a mark on the outside ski, Harry, please? Um, oh, sorry, the outside leg. Yeah, there you go. So, so the, the outside leg there, if it softens really quickly, <laughs> It's great, great face. Um, he's looking a bit serious in fairness. Um, anyway, if that outside ski, uh, outside leg softens really quickly, then the pelvis is allowed to move back on top of the skis fast. And what then happens is it moves really fast into the initiation of the new turn and you kind of lose the connection to the outside ski in the initiation phase. So when this movement's happening, when you're recentering the pelvis on top of the skis, Think about um, keeping active in the muscles on the outside ski and, and releasing them, but releasing them with tension, right? So it's a precise movement. Um, cool. All right. Uh, let's go to the angle of the pelvis. So you can see here um, the angle of the pelvis is starting to flatten out. So again, if we flip back to, to here, you can see the pelvis angle there and then compare it to the pelvis angle here and you can see it's flatter straight away, right? So similarly to what I spoke about just before, right through the completion, the pelvis is starting to flatten out, right? Until it gets to that same spot, that transition where it's right above the skis, where it's in a neutral position, okay, where it's flat. This is to help, like, this helps the upper body um, move back on top of the skis into the position ready to, to kind of enter into the new turn in a different direction. Right, so both of these um, lateral movements are really going to, to help you achieve the outcome of the completion phase, which is to release the turn, right? So by flattening the skis and by moving the body uh, in a progressive and, and precise manner back on top of the skis, um, you're, you're help, it's helping you to release that turn. Um, yeah, I think, I think I've, I've covered mostly what I wanted to cover there, unless anyone else wants to jump in. All right, let's go to some rotational stuff. Cool, nice. So, so we're talking about through the control then is the, the pelvis and the skis uh, being square or lined up with each other, right? So as we come into the completion, that changes a little bit. So what happens is the skis will, will turn at a, a faster rate than the pelvis and that creates the, the separation. So if you see here, uh, the two black arrows uh, pointing the direction the skis are traveling and then the green arrow is pointing in the direction that the pelvis is moving, right? And so the reason that that's really important 
is it allows the center of gravity to move back over the skis, but with the skis to release the turn. So in the completion, the whole, whole job is to, to get out of the turn and release it, right? So if we do that, if we've got a little bit of separation here, that's gonna not interrupt the path of the center of gravity, and it's gonna allow us to, to release that turn by flattening the skis. So if at this point in the turn, if we've got too much separation or if the hip or the pelvis is countered out of the turn too much, then the center of gravity will travel across the skis, so it will flatten them, but it's not gonna travel with the skis. So you're gonna end up um, being um, either like diving into the next turn a little bit too quick, or maybe being a little bit um, aft on the skis. So if you're, if you're a bit too square, so if the, if the pelvis is square to the skis at this phase, then it will take a lot longer for the center of gravity to then to go back over the skis to flatten them off. So your, your release will take a little bit longer. So it's gonna interrupt that path and not encourage the center of gravity to get out of one turn and start to move into the next turn. So really important, I think. Oh. All right, happy with that. Um, okay, so moving on, initiation. Um, you may have cha uh, noticed that we've changed the skier. We, we want to share the love. Um, a few of you um, probably familiar with the picture that, pictures that we're showing here. Um, so if we talk about the, um, the pelvis and its relationship to the base of support here in the initiation, you can already see, right, that the pelvis has started to move um, away from the skis or away from the base of support in the direction of that arrow. And um, it kind of, the pelvis will continue um, to move further and further away from the base of support through this initiation uh, phase of the turn. So, you know, the, again, this is, this is kind of helping to, to tip the skis up, right, to gain some, some edge angle and some early grip during that, that initiation phase of the turn. Um, we talked a little bit about Martin and I, both of us, um, <clears throat> in the completion phase, if, if the kind of body dives in for, for whatever reason to the, into the initiation of the turn, um, a lot of the time the weight is transferred onto the inside ski. So if, if for example, this skier, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, if the skier allowed the pelvis to move inside really quickly in the initiation phase of the turn, they may lose the connection to the outside ski, which you're trying to kind of build um, and keep strong during this phase of the turn. So um, while the pelvis is moving in, inside the base of support, um, that the connection to the outside ski is really important. So they're only gonna move um, as they feel that force build, right? So I think um, we talk a little bit about, or a lot about the lower legs, sort of getting the edge angle at the start of the turn. So, so the lower legs are gonna tip the skis, right? And gain that initial edge angle. And then as that skier, as the skier starts to feel the force build up under the skis, then the pelvis starts to move inside. And that's what you're seeing in this photo here, right? So the pelvis is just starting to move inside the turn, right? Um, and this is going to, you know, build edge angle um, while ideally um, maintaining a really strong connection with the outside. Okay, so if we then move on to the uh, angle of the pelvis, and you can see again um, a similar sort of um, thing going on to what we looked at earlier in the control phase, um, where you can see the angle of the pelvis is um, more level than the angle of the skis, right? So immediately you know that there's been um, some angulation created by keeping the pelvis level, right? So that's, that's the same thing about, about kind of staying with the outside ski um, and building some, some grip there. Um, what, what can happen here is if the pelvis inclines into the turn too much, then the upper body um, is gonna be inclining as well and more oriented on top of that inside ski. Um, and that's when you're gonna kind of lose, lose the grip um, to the outside and it's gonna have like a, a negative effect on the rest of the turn, like the rest of the control phase where you're not gonna be able to consistently build, um, consistently build the pressure under the skis, right? Um, so, so again, the skier, you can see the angle of the pelvis is not completely level, 
but there's uh there's some intent there right there's that same thing there's some intent to keep the inside hip high even though it might not be completely level but keeping it high to to develop some uh form of of angulation um to carry that carry that through the initiation phase of the turn um and so, I mean, our goal here in the initiation, right, is to, to build a platform, right, so that we can move from um, and, and really get good performance and control, uh, sorry, good performance and, um, and grip into the control phase, right? So, you know, uh, moving the pelvis inside uh, is going to help you develop that edge angle and maintaining some intent with the inside hip and some angulate to create angulation in the body is going to keep you balanced over the outside ski to really uh, to really develop that platform well, right? And to have a solid platform to move from for the rest of the turn. Anything there, boys? Do you guys want to jump in at all? No, no, we're all good. All good. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Nice. So, so talking rotationally then of, of that pelvis. So. Um, what's kind of happening through the initiation is that at the start of it, the, the separation is, is maintained and then slowly through the initiation, the skis are going to realign with the pelvis. So by the top of control, when you enter control, you're back to that square position again, right? Um, so it's, uh, it's really important, like the reason of why we want that to happen is we want that center of gravity to, to move across the skis and move inside like Felix is talking about, but we also want it to move with the skis. So if the pelvis is rotated in a, a slightly different orientation, so if it's got two direct, two down the hill, then the center of gravity will move inside the skis, but it won't necessarily move with the skis. So you'll move inside, you'll be balanced on the inside ski and the edge angle might be higher, but you might not be balanced on the outside ski. And flip that around, if the hip is totally square through the initiation, then you'll be moving, you will be able to probably balance on the outside ski, but the, the center of gravity won't move inside as much, so you won't be able to, to generate that, um, that grip or that edge angle. So um, the outcome on the ski is we want the center of gravity to move with the skis, but still staying balanced on the outside ski. That's what we ideally want. But talking rotationally of the pelvis, I guess the, the key thing is that through the control phase, we want to be square and then everything through the completion, through initiation, through that whole transition period, we're trying to just not interrupt the path of the center of gravity. We're trying to let it flow from one control phase to the next um, to maintain the, the energy and, and get all that force in the control phase. Cool. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well I said. In summary, um, so the pelvis is an integral bone in the body. There's a large mass and a great effect on the center of gravity when skiing right? Because it's proximity, it's super close. Um, therefore, small movement of the pelvis can have a huge effect on the performance of the body and the skis. Um, yeah, so there's, there's just a few points, um, you know, from us. Um, I think if I was to touch on one of those, I think using video as a tool is like a really important thing to progress your skiing. I think that there's, there, there's often a really a real discrepancy between a feeling and what is actually happening. And, and with the pelvis, it, it's sometimes it's quite hard to sort of train without seeing for yourself. Um, it's not like, you know, moving your hands around or trying to get a hand position where you can see your hands the whole time you're skiing or you can really reference them well. Like the hips sometimes can be a little difficult like that. So I'd really encourage you guys to, to take video of each other and um, just so you can, because sometimes what happens is you'll, you'll, you'll have a feeling and you'll be like, that was it for sure. Or, you know, and then you'll see it on video and you'll be like, oh God, that was not it. Or, you know, stuff like that. I think it's really like clarifying to see, to see the video. And then what you can do is, is if you, you know, you have a good run you, and you see it on video, then you can start to associate um, those, those feelings with, what you're trying to get out of your skin rather than entrenching kind of um, habits that might not be so good, but might feel good to you. Does that make, I hope that makes sense to people. I didn't. Yeah. I just, that just with, just to with kind some of, form of clarity. Yeah. Just to sort of kind of, I guess to add on to that a little bit um, for, for me, when I was kind of going through this and, and training it, I had a, a really strong um, 
I guess, purpose it, to try not to create a one position, right? So we were talking about it the other night. Um, Harry brought up a really good point that um, at, the, at the start of, of one of the manuals, it says uh, skiing is a sport of movement. And that is very true in, in this. We're not trying to just create one specific pose. We're trying to allow it to move the whole time to best deal with the forces or what we're trying to do in each phase of the turn. Um, so when you're out there and you're looking at your videos, um, we'll just, yeah, we'll try not to just create poses. We're trying to, to, to align ourselves or move ourselves so that we deal with the forces the best or what we're trying to achieve in each phase. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks guys. Uh, that was really uh, interesting presentation. And I personally feel like this subject of kind of hip discipline and, you know, how the hip moves through the turn is actually that missing point in a lot of people's scheme that's holding them back from pushing them to that next level. So I think it's great that you guys have um, kind of brought this more to light and uh, done a presentation on it. And I encourage everyone to get out there and uh, practice this when we can get out on snow and, uh, you know, think about these ideas that Martin and Felix have uh, brought up. Now, do we have any questions from anyone or are we feeling pretty good? You can raise your hand or you can just unmute yourself. Yeah, unmute. Yes, guys, got a quick. I'll, I'll, I'll take this off. Um, shall I take us off screen sharing? Yes, yes thank you. Sure. yusuke has got a question, surely. <laughs> too, many, too, too many to ask, so I'll, I'll send you a um, thesis later. <laughs> okay. No worries. Harry, is this going to be available online? For the people yes. somewhere? Yes, of course. So this video will be released onto the NZSAA Facebook page in, uh, I'd say, two or three days. So you can go back and review the information that's been presented. You can, you know, if you think, oh, what was Felix talking about? Yeah. Initiation. You can go yeah. back and rewatch, which would be really good. And I'm sure, I'm just going to speak for Martin and Felix. I'm sure that if you had a pressing question, you could just send them a private message on Facebook or something if necessary. If a question comes to you at a later time. Yeah. yeah, totally. If you see something and you're like, what are they talking about? Then, uh, you know, just, just message us. We'd love that. We'd love that. Yeah. Totally agree. Send we'll, them we'll do Felix. <laughs> awesome. Great. Cool. Well, we're going to stop recording now. We'll, we'll, um, we'll stay. Uh, we will hang out for the conversation for a little bit. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, we'll stay.